So I was out riding my Razor electric dirt bike the other day and the battery died. And I don't mean like it ran out of charge, I mean the BMS gave up the ghost, the battery is now kaput. And instead of spending $1,000 on a new battery, I had this commodity battery off Amazon sitting around and I'm curious how much I can get out of it. So this is a cheap lithium battery pack off of Amazon designed for e-bikes. It is 52 volts, 14.4 amp hours not a whole lot of watts. I think this is like 20 to, or not a whole lot of amps. I think this is 20 amp maximum. So you're not going to get a ton of actual motive force out of this. So I was curious how I could maximize the output of these cheap economy battery packs. Enter this old Roadmaster mountain bike. This is actually an idea I've had since I was 12 that I've always wanted to do, though I always imagined doing it with a gasoline engine. The plan is to mount the battery or the motor, or a motor here-ish, driving the front sprocket, this large one here. Leave the factory chain in place, and what a chain it is, and have it on the small sprocket. That gets us our initial gear reduction. Then back here, we have six speeds available to shift through with the rear derailleur, meaning we can have a very aggressive gear reduction for quick takeoffs and still have a large gear for high-speed cruising. Now. Why do you need gears with an electric motor? Well, the speed of a brushless electric motor is limited by the voltage for some reason. I genuinely don't fully understand brushless electric motor theory, but the voltage determines the top speed and the amperage determines your torque effectively. So we have here a low torque, not very high speed, uh, mid-drive setup effectively, which means you can gear it for low end or you can gear it for high end, but it's not powerful and fast spinning enough to do both. So we're adding mechanical complexity to make up for cheaping out on the powertrain. And cheap out we have, because here we have another Viver 2000 watt <coughs> brushless DC electric motor. <coughs> uh, the concern here is this is going to try and pull too many amps from the battery and uh, the BMS is probably gonna shut off. So, not quite sure how I'm gonna solve that yet. I, I don't actually have a plan. <laughs> We're just gonna see how it goes. And then we've got uh, some other stuff here, some hand grips that I think will fit mountain bike handlebars. I'm not actually sure. Uh, and some mounting hardware we're not gonna use. Uh, over here, I have a sprocket that was weirdly hard to get that will fit on the motor and hopefully work with the bicycle chain and then this is the chain that's going to go from the motor to the uh, front sprocket but first I need to cut this metal into brackets and I need to find enough random nuts and bolts to actually mount the motor uh, what I've already been doing is drilled three holes that are definitely lined up and tapped them uh, for the motor base plate. So let me screw that in real quick and we can kind of get a vague idea of what this is all going to look like. Uh, so now we've got the base plate mounted. This should just, yeah, slots in like that. It even has a key to lock it into place. And then we have this XT60 connector that goes to the motor controller. All pretty straightforward. Power switch over here. Looks like it's being stored shipped with an 80% state of charge. Uh, let me meter this out, make sure everything's making a good connection. I know I left my meter out here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's actually putting out three volts when it's off. And then I turn it on, 52 volts DC. So my thoughts on the motor, I really wanted a steel mountain bike for this, which this is, because I thought I was going to be, um, uh, welding a, a, a thing on here. But I think what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna clamp it. Because if I clamp it, I can adjust it. And I like that idea. That is, uh, <laughs> that is a lot of motor. I don't know if this is going to pass muster with uh, local law enforcement, but that's a problem for future Jake and law enforcement. Let's see if I can make some mounting brackets. There's also the issue that this bike doesn't work. Like the rear brakes are knackered. I don't know if the shifter works at all. The tubes are trashed. But first I just want to proof a concept the powertrain and then worry about all that stuff later. Though I might get some penetrating oil going on these really nasty pull cables and see if I can salvage those. Okay, got a couple brackets cut out. Let's see if I can sort of rough in 
the position of this guy here. Let's see, we're wanting a big chain ring. So we're gonna wanna be right there. That actually looks reasonably close to actually being in line with the, uh, the sprocket that I wanted. Let's see, uh, this is reverse threaded, I think? Yep, there we go. Hmm, I'm noticing an issue. The bike is quite top heavy now. This came with a T8F sprocket, which is kind of typical for pit bikes and stuff. That looks like this. Bicycle sprocket looks like that. And goes right on there. I think the next step is gonna to be to take this front derailleur off since uh, it's getting to the point where it's gonna be in the way. Shane. Ha ha ha. This would be a lot easier if I just wanted to use a tensioner. Well, the motor's in. I love the position. I don't love uh, the realities of clamping it to the tube here because then you've got in and out, up and down and twisting to get all perfectly in alignment. Guarantee you that chain doesn't make it down the street before it jumps off. But we're getting really close here. Uh, all that's left is cutting off the cranks, airing up the tires, which I'm sure don't hold air, so pretty uh, pointless activity. Uh, we're gonna install the controller, and then I have to figure out the controls up here. Uh, this is the shifter for the back. This is the shifter for the front that we're not gonna need anymore. So I gotta take off both these grips, and I gotta either move the control cable over to this side, or just flip the whole uh, grip shifter, put it on that side, and then on this side I'll put the actual uh, uh, mo uh, motorcycle style thing. This guy here. Yeah. I'm breaking out the zip ties, that's how you know we're getting close, because all that's really left is hooking up the electronics now. And then we can test ride it, which I guess I could just technically dump it in the basket and call it a day. Let's see, I already uh, spliced the XT60 connector onto the Viva controller. Uh, I put the hand control on, and I ended up just switching the grip shifter to the other side, which... Uh, is certainly a thing that exists. So I need to run this cable back. I'm going to mount this uh, upside down underneath the seat. Very, very convenient place for it, honestly. Just gonna zip tie it for now. Uh, and for whatever reason, this controller did not come with the uh, terminal block. So I guess I'm just gonna find a way to bolt these uh, all together and then tape them. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of other options. Okay, I got all my connections taped and zip tied up out away from anything moving. Uh, battery on, key on. I think this is the, this is not the lowest ratio, but let's see if the motor moves. That is, uh, much too fast. <laughs> I guess it's time for a test ride. Unfortunately, it's dark outside. Yeah, so pretty much what I was afraid... Oh, wait, where did it go? Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> apparently the primary gear reduction was not enough, and it just instantly threw the chain. And, um, where did the chain actually end up? Looking for something shiny. Hey, that looks intact. I don't think I can get a smaller sprocket. I don't know if I can get a bigger sprocket. I might be able to get a cassette with a larger uh, rear chain ring, perhaps. <sighs> Maybe welding a bracket on there is the uh, the actual move. Weld a bracket and then use a tensioner. I'd really hoped that would be enough uh, gear reduction to not stress the motor that much. <laughs> Apparently I was wrong. Okay, here's what I've ended up with. Um, this, you might recognize, is the chain tensioner off of the Razor, which it doesn't need right now. So that actually perfectly bolts onto the case itself of this MY1020. And now we've got 
chain tension. We also have a brace, uh, which I need to cut about here and actually affix, but uh, that's just a piece of metal screwed into here. So yeah, the, the motor is actually properly constrained now and it works. I've gone around the block a few times and I hit 30 miles an hour consistently. Um, only thing left now is finishing that up. The seat sucks so bad. And uh, yeah, my, my, my foot pedal could use some work and I broke the rear derailleur cable. So tomorrow I'll get some um, uh, footage of this thing going on the road so you can get a vague idea of how ridiculous it looks. Got the uh, pedals uh, welded onto the rear triangle so now I have some place to put my feet. And somehow these have the least comfortable seat. Just every mountain bike has the least comfortable seat ever made by man. I've ridden this maybe two miles and I'm already sore. So that needs fixed. And I've got a new rear derailleur and stuff on the way because I accidentally broke mine. So now the shifting bike is well, it's stuck in third, but it still works. And uh, then I guess I'll go order some parts for the rear derailleur and a uh, super comfy seat. And I don't know what else this might need. Oh, yeah, I really, really need to get that um, final drive down. So I don't know, maybe I find like a cassette uh, with way bigger first gear. Um, my bike, yeah, like this Trek here. Look at that low starter gear. I need something like that to really uh, help with low speed stuff because right now it's just kind of not very smooth and kind of coggy. It's not ideal. Also the brakes suck, but also it's coggy and uncomfortable. So there you have it. That is a one evening build. I actually got something from a pile of parts and dream to a functional-ish thing. And I, I don't think many people have actually done this execution of an e-bike before because the thing here is hub motors are like $600 for a decent one. Mid drives are hideously expensive. So this is by far the cheapest way to build an e-bike. You just lose out on the, uh, the pedals. I suppose you could do the giant pizza uh, rear sprocket like they do with the 50cc conversions. You could do that with a T8F chain. I mean, you could literally just do exactly how the 50cc conversions are. T8F chain, big uh, rear sprocket, and away you go. It'd be the exact same thing, but electric. Which, if I was smart, I would have done, but I wanted to shift gears, so here we are. Thanks for watching. Yeah.